It's actually the reverse. The 23 that were first encountered by indigenous oh, hundreds of years it's ago. Green for One thing years. is for certain. Well, if you I'm come back a and I'm in the. You should try to resist putting it on. Tool. Otherwise, you might not be feeling like yourself for much longer. Now go check out SCP 3166. Let's show you around. It's the bathroom. My mama sleeps, sister, that chick was I fucked, that other chick, and my daughter. Then over here, pool table area. Over this way, storage. More storage area. The round room. Up there. The fireplace. My bedroom. Another chill area. Then up here. We have the kitchen. Then over here, we have another chair area, bar area. So, yeah, you know. Press prio, I guess. Monster Garfield attacks Gorefield, and SCP-2317, the devourer of worlds, a door to another world for more monstrous SCPs that will haunt your dreams. Hmm. In the spiritual heart of Australia, an ancient story takes flight. Every neighborhood has a house like it. You can probably picture it. That old, decrepit building on the very end of the... SCP-3930 does not exist. Thanks for watching. Now check out SCP. The following information is only known to seven living people. Even those actively guarding this anomaly will never know this information. Every single person who believes in or aware of the existence of SCP-3930 has the potential to increase its danger. SCP-3930 has been given the risk class critical, the highest possible risk class for an anomaly, meaning that individuals nearby will invariably be exposed to acute, life-threatening harm, and that these effects cannot be mitigated. You learn about SCP-3930 at your own risk, with the knowledge that this awareness puts your life at hazard. Someday soon, you may be forced to make the ultimate sacrifice for the good of all life and matter in the universe. That is why it is imperative that you know one essential thing. SCP-3930 does not exist. Now with that out of the way, we have only one question for you. Can you hear the screaming? It was when Dr. Vasilev heard the screaming that he and his ragtag team of scientists knew it was already over. The year was 1971, and Dr. Vasilev's team was stationed at a highly secretive Soviet <coughs> research outpost near what would later be established as the Russian town of Yusinsk within the Komi Republic. As far as Dr. Vasilev was concerned, they were dead men already. Well, that's not entirely accurate. To be dead is to be... something. And the men that had once been stationed with them, but were here no longer, could not be considered something at all. 
their brush with the immensely powerful and classified anomaly later known as SCP-3930 had robbed them of their very existence. Now, Dr. Vasilyev knew that he and the few remaining men stationed at the base with him would be next. The Soviet government had dispatched a detachment consisting of around a hundred soldiers and scientists to investigate the anomaly in the Komi Republic. As far as they could tell, it appeared to occupy a one kilometer square area within a forest. But to say that it really occupied anything would be a stretch. And out of the over 100 men who had been dispatched, now scarcely 30 remained. Observation teams had been sent into the anomalous zone to collect data on what exactly they were dealing with. But each time, it seemed as though the researchers were doomed to know less and less about what they were investigating. From a distance, the area didn't even appear to be anomalous. It looked simply like a continuation of the forest, complete with the expected flora, fauna, and even some distant evidence of human habitation, like an abandoned building. But without fail, nobody who had ever seen the building up close had ever returned. Thanks to SCP-3930, they had simply ceased to be. Because simply put, when you introduce something into nothing, the nothing wins. Dr. Vasiliev had seen too many good men disappear into oblivion, and soon it would be his turn, too. But first, something horrible would crawl out of the zone. Something that shouldn't exist. Something that didn't exist. Something that will never exist. And yet, here it was. In science, the observer effect is a dreaded phenomenon. All experiments involve the observation of phenomena to collect data and then prove or disprove a hypothesis. But the observer effect describes the frustrating scenario where the mere act of observing a phenomenon alters it, reducing the usefulness of the data. A common example of this in mundane life is checking the pressure of your car or bike's tires. To do this, you need to let out some air, thus changing the pressure. But pressure holds a very different meaning when you're working with what might be the universe's largest patch of nothing. Because of their prime directive, namely researching the anomaly, Dr. Vasiliev and his fellow scientists were effectively forced to observe SCP-3930. And 3930 apparently doesn't like that. The scientists only noticed sounds at first barely perceptible little screeches that could easily be written off as your mind playing a trick on you. And, in a sense, it is. 